Hey, Frontline Football. I am just here to tell you about something that isn't football related. Today is, well, probably for you out there, is the second day of March Madness. So right here, I have my bracket already filled out. For my winner, I have San Diego State University. But I am here to ask the question. Put down in the comments below if your bracket has already been broken in the first day or second day or whenever you're watching this. And tell me which matchups have already broke your bracket and who you chose to want to win those matchups. So, welcome to Front Life Football. You want to play for our updates and highlights across the NFL season and offseason and roll the intro. All right, guys, welcome to Frontline Football. Today we are going to be talking about the best division in football, the NFC West. All right, so the first team that we have is the Seattle Seahawks. Top needs are offensive line, D-line, corner, running back, tight end. The guy guys to bring back, well, not really a, one person to bring back, is K.J. Wright. Frontline Football best available, Josh Myers, Trey Turner, Gabe, Gabe Jackson, Carlos Basham uh, for offensive line. For D-line, Carlos Basham, Darius Stills, and Carlos Dunlap. For corner, Tyson Campbell, A.J. Boye, uh, someone Alexander. Not, running back, Najee Harris, Chubber, Chubba, Hobbert, and then Rex Burkett. And then finally... Uh, tight end Tyler Iver, G General Everett, and Kyle Rudolph. God, I hate saying these names. I'm gonna hand this one off to Josh. Okay, so Seahawks fans, you have 17.1 million dollars at your disposal for this year's free agency class. So maybe I would say to get somebody like a Trey Turner or a Gabe Jackson for that offensive line. And if you want to go into the draft way, then select Josh Myers. He had a great season in college. So I would say draft him. Next, with D-line, somebody who is probably in your range to draft is Carlos Basham. So I'd say get him in the first round. He is an amazing college prospect, and he is right in where you guys are drafting in the first round. So I would say draft. Oh, wait, no, you guys don't have your first round pick. I forgot about that. You traded to the Jets for Jamal Adams. So your second round pick, probably Josh Myers, would probably be the best option. And for your corners, A.J. Boye would probably be the best for that. But don't forget to bring back K.J. Wright to help you. Well, not on that side, but, you know, bring back K.J. Wright as well. I was also going to say... And the running backs, Chubba Hobbert would probably be the best person for you at your second round pick. He seems like he could fall there as a running back. And then Rex Burkhead, if you can't get him and you just want somebody like a Carlos Hyde that you had. So, finally, tight ends. You could get somebody like a Tyler Eifert. You could get Gerald Everett. Or even Kyle Rudolph. I would say the best person right there is Tyler Eifert. If you want to get somebody like that, he'd probably be your best option to maybe keep Wilson in Seattle. So I will hand it off to Jack for his take. All right, Seattle. When I look at this on paper, this situation isn't great because of the lack of draft capital, but there's a little bit of money. The recent reports suggest that Russ is they declined Chicago's best offer for Russell Wilson. So pending another offer, I believe that Russell stay in Seattle for now. Key word is for now. I think he could shake loose at some point in the future, just not this year. So for now, Seattle, here's your, my suggestion for your free agent philosophy. Build a line. Build a line for Russ. And I think Trey Turner, Gabe Jackson at guards are two good people you can bring in. You could get Thuney. I don't think you could have even afforded it because he was $18 million. You have 17 So, But Gabe Jackson, Trey Turner are both intriguing options. Unfortunately for you guys, the Jamal Adams trade is going to set you back because now you no longer have that first-round pool of talent to pull from. So now you got to start looking for the second and third. 
But Josh Myers is an intriguing option. D-line, Carlos Dumlap is gone, and there's really not a lot of talent there. Carlos Basham, Darius Stills, and Car- bringing back Carlos Dunlap is still an option. It's still on the table, and that's something intriguing to bring. But I think drafting and bringing back Dunlap, maybe a double dip would be best. Cornerback, Shaquille Griffin, signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's not coming back, so you need this needs to be addressed. A.J. Boye and Mackenzie Alexander can be great fill-ins for Griffin. And Tyson Campbell could be a solid pick, maybe in the second or third round, to develop. As for running back, Chris Carson is gone. And you got to look into all your options here. Najee, he probably fits best because Pete loves his power back. So this makes a lot of sense here. If he falls in the second round, I'm all for Najee to the Seahawks. Chubba Hubbard seems like a more realistic option in the second and third. If Najee goes a little higher like early second, late first. But Rex Burkhead could be an underrated signing by Seattle, but they definitely do need a back in the room. There's not a lot. They also got rid of Carlos Hyde. And last but not least, tight end. There's a lot to be desired there. Greg Olson is retired, and Hollister is meh, and he's not even on the team as of right now. Tyler Eifert is a great veteran option. Kyle Rudolph, I think, is the best option on this list. That's a very intriguing option, and it's, he's a pretty solid target overall. I think you guys should aim for tar- Kyle Rudolph. Ger- uh, Gerald Everett is not a bad plan B, though. What are your thoughts, Josh? Well, I have said my thoughts, so I will hand it off to Zach. All right. For um, Trey Turner, I would say to sign him. Build, like Jack said, build an offensive line. Russ wants to stay if you build an offensive line for him. He was mad about receivers, like I think. 2019, you got him receivers. Now he's mad about the offensive line. Now, get him the offensive line. You don't have to trade him in like a long time and he can retire as a Seahawk. Um, I think the way that you do that is either getting Gabe Jackson and or you can get both Trey Turner and Gabe Jackson. Then you get Josh Myers in the in the draft that deals with all all of your um money basically, but still that is very good just to build the offensive line so Russ stays. Now, D line, Carlos Basham. If you don't want to go Josh Myers, Carlos Basham is a great pickup. Also, Darius Stills, he is actually the best. He's not the best, but he's I think he's the fifth best. No, he's not the fifth. Where is he? There he is. He is the fifth, fifth best defensive tackle in this class. Came out of West Virginia, Virginia, and he is very good. Um, had seven sacks in 2019. And... Uh, one forced fumble, and total tackles was 46. This guy's very good, and I think he'll produce very well on, on your team. Um, corner, Tyson Campbell, a very solid option. I don't think that you guys should go corner in the second round right now. You guys are uh, very, You guys either need to work on D-line or O-line. And then uh, A.J. Boye, if you don't want to sign the offensive line guys, like I said, A.J. Boy is a solid option, not a number one, so you're going to have to figure out who's going to be your number one receiver, uh, not number one corner to cover the number one receiver. Um, you also can just go with uh, McKenzie Alexander, which would be very good. Um, running back, Najee Harris, I don't think that he's going to be there. Maybe Chubba, because he was supposed to go in the third, so maybe you can take him in the third. You guys do really well in the late rounds. I expect you guys to do the same, or you guys can re- sign Rex Burkett. And finally, tight end, I think Kyle Rudolph is the best uh, decision here. All right, we're going to go on to the L.A. Rams. They have a cap space of negative $18 million. Their team needs are inside linebacker, edge, center, cornerback, and offensive tackle. The guy I bring back is Gerald Ever. Er- Aravit, I think, their tight end. Uh, Frontline football, best available. Chaz, and they also don't have their first round pick, so you have to take that into account. Chaz, Sir Tate, uh, and Aziz, okay, nope. I'm not saying those. Carlos Basham, Darius Sills for Edge, Josh Myers, and Dylan Ra- Raiders, I don't know. Tyson Campbell, Paulson Abdul. Okay. Dylan. Okay, so we put Dylan 
Razor twice, okay? And then Alex Leatherman. All right, or that's Leatherman. All right, Josh, you're you're doing this one. Okay, so LA, you kind of put yourself in a hole here because of your Super Bowl run. You decided to build through free agency and not build through the draft, unfortunately. So here is your uh, state right now. You have negative eighteen million. You cannot resign Gerald Ever Everett, but what you can do is build for the future. Now, first, your best guy to probably get if he falls is Aziz Ojolari. He seems like a great guy to have on your team. Uh, next, maybe Darius Spills if he falls to you. No, a center, Josh Myers would be a good option, or Dylan Raduns. Raduns. And then... Uh, cornerback Tyson Campbell probably won't fall to you. Paulson Abad Abedo would probably fall to you. And Alex Leatherman for tackle would probably fall to you. But I would say with that first pick, probably pick up either Chaz Surratt or Aziz Ojolari. And that would probably be my plan for you guys. And then start drafting your other needs as the draft progresses. So I will hand it off to Jack for his take. All right, the Rams, this is going to be a very quiet offseason for you. You made your splash. You got Matt Stafford for two first and Jared Goff. So don't expect much from free agency or the draft because you're not at zero yet. You need to be the zero by tomorrow. Uh, good luck. So as for the first need, inside linebacker, this one's pretty obvious. They lost Corey Littleton, and they didn't really get his successor. So ooh, Chaz Surratt and... Aziz Ojolari. They're both solid options for the second, third rounds. Edge rushers, you have um, the guy you just re-signed, not Brooks. Um, I can't think of his name, but he got 11 sacks, but you could definitely use another one on the other side. And I think Carlos Basham is an intriguing option. I don't know much about Darius Stills, but maybe he's good. As for center, yep, because I believe they're losing their center free agency. Josh Myers and Dylan Raduns could be good options. Corner, need someone with Jalen Ramsey. Tyson Campbell, I really like that. And Paulson Ad Adibo could be another good option. And last but not least, offensive tackle. Wh Whitworth is not getting any younger. You're going to have to fix that sooner than later. Dylan Randus and Alex Le I like Alex Leatherman. I think he's overall the best one. And I think overall... Don't expect much from the Rams. I expect, expect a lot of buzz in the season, but this offseason, crickets, and it's going to continue to be that way. All right, so I'll say my take. Okay, they need to work on inside linebacker with their second-round uh, pick. They don't have a first-round pick because they traded it away. Um, so to the Lions, yeah, they traded it away. Did they trade it? No, they traded it to the Jags for Jalen Ramsey this year. Your next year will be the Lions. Okay. I think they should go with Chaz or Tant. All right. Whatever. Inside linebacker they should really go for here. If they don't want to go there, then they should take Josh Myers. Um, Edge, I would hold off on that for now. I know it's one of your needs, but you had a guy with 11 sacks last season. So I think it's fine for now. Maybe take a late-round guy. Corner, if you don't want to go Josh Myers or Chaz, um, go with Tyson Campbell. He's the best option there, and he's a very good corner. I think he came out of Florida, so yeah. And then finally, offensive tackle Alex Leatherman, very solid. He's probably the best second round uh tackle in this draft, so I would say get him. And you're not bringing back anybody, so yeah, say goodbye to him. All right, Josh, you already said your take, right? Yes. All right, so now we are going to go to the San Francisco 49ers with a cap space of 20.5 20, 20. million. I said that right. Top needs are cornerback because they lost Richard Sherman, um, offensive tackle, quarterback, safety, and wide receiver. Guys to bring back Solomon Thomas and Trent Williams. Frontline football, best available. Caleb Farley, Patrick Sertan. Richard Slater, Christian Darson, 
or Trent, or they re-signed Trent Williams. Um, for uh, quarterback, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, trade for Sam Darnold. And for safety, Earl Thomas, Anthony Harris, LaMarcus Joyner. And finally, for receiver, Marvin Jones, Rashad Perryman, Sammy Watkins. I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. All right. For San Fran, definitely need corner. You got Verrett back, but you lost Witherspoon. You're most likely losing Sherman. And Kawan Williams, your your slot corner, has a huge connection to Robert Sala and the Jets. So you definitely need to address corner at some point. Farley and Sertan are both great options if you can grab them. I also think that Asante Samuel in a second could be another intriguing option, but they definitely need to work on this cornerback position. As for offensive tackle, if Trent Williams manages to shake loose, then you definitely need to address this, and I'd address this at 12 with Rashawn Slater. That is the, my opinion. Rashawn Slater will be great, but I think priority one should be Trent Williams. You traded for him, and I think you should make an attempt to re-sign him. There's no reason not to. So Trent Williams' plan A, Rashawn Slater's a great plan B. As for the third need, quarterback. Now there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. They go a lot of directions. You could roll it back with Jimmy G. No one's saying you can't, but I think Trey Lance and Mac Jones, if you believe have more upside, maybe you can grab those and Jimmy G can slowly transition out of the starting job and take it to one of those. Another option is Shanahan and Sam Darnold. These two have kind of been connected because... Robert Sala knows them from the Niners, so maybe they already kind of talk to each other. Maybe they really like Sam Darnold, and he's a good fit for the system. And if anyone's able to fix Sam Darnold's major flaws as a quarterback, it's probably Kyle Shanahan. So that's another option I consider as the Sam Mar- Darnold market begins to dry up. Like I said with the last team that we had, Sam Denver, yesterday's video. As the market begins to dry up, you could be looking at getting Sam Darnold for a third or even a fourth at this point. As for safety, I really like Earl Thomas. This could be an intriguing option because you may lose Kubisky Tart. Anthony Harris is a good option as well. LaMarcus Joyner is another intriguing option. One of these guys needs to be 49ers by the end of the week as this is a solid position to fill and I feel like they could all get the job done. As for wide receivers, unfortunately Marvin Jones signed a deal with the Jacksonville Jaguars a couple minutes ago so he is off the board. But Perriman and Watkins bring some speed to the offense, and I feel like Shanahan will get the most out of those guys. As for guys to bring back, Solomon Thomas is, eh, you want him back, bring him back. If you don't, that's fine too. But Trent Williams, that's pretty big. You need to get him back so you can focus on other positions of need, such as corner and maybe even cornerback. What are your thoughts here, Zach? Well, with corner, I don't think they should go with Caleb Farley or Sertan. Um, Rashad Slater or Christian... Darson, I think they should go with Rashad Slater if they don't want to go with Trent Williams. Now, if they do go for, uh, if they do resign Trent Williams, well, I don't think they should stick with Jimmy G. And I think Mac Jones or Trey Lance are very good decisions. Maybe even Sam Darnold trade, but then you're losing draft capital. And I think that you guys are in a very good situation. You have a great defense, and you just have to work on it a little bit this offseason with corner and safety. And I think the offense, if they have a good quarterback, this team can go very far and make a very deep playoff run back to the Super Bowl maybe. So I think if you put like Trey Lance or Mac Jones in this situation, get him trained up by Jimmy G because Jimmy G also got trained up by Tom Brady. So they're basically getting trained up by Tom Brady's old person that he trained. Um, Then uh, Trey Lance or Mac Jones would be, I think, a very good quarterback, especially with Shanahan. Uh, safety, I like Earl Thomas. I think Earl Thomas was a very uh, good safety for the Ravens and the Seahawks. And uh, this would be a very good signing. I think Anthony Harris, he's younger. Uh, he's been playing. He played in the league this year other than Earl Thomas. And LaMarcus Joyner, the same thing with uh, Earl Thomas. The same thing that has them over Earl Thomas. They played in the league this year. And then finally, wide receiver, Marvin Jones, they can't go for. Rashad Perryman and Sammy Watkins, I think they they should go for Sammy Watkins because he's a very speedy receiver and he can get the job done with his athleticism on the field. Josh? Okay, so first, I think that they should, if Patrick Sertan is on the board, he may get taken by the Cowboys before, but they should probably try to get him just saying with that 
then uh, they should re-sign Trent Williams because they did trade for him. So just re-sign him. So then you can actually win next year. Next, uh, if you would like, maybe. Now, this is a huge maybe. You could try to draft one of the quarterbacks in the draft. Or Watson has shown interest in San Francisco. Just that would cost you a lot. That's the thing. You could get an all-star quarterback who is probably going to win MVP next year, or you could, but you'd have to give up a lot of assets for a player like Watson. So that probably wouldn't be your best move. I would say probably draft somebody like a Mac Jones or Kyle Trask to get trained up by Jimmy G. And then with safety, uh, Anthony Harris and LaMarcus Joyner seem like the best options because Earl Thomas is starting to get up there in age. He didn't play this season. And then finally with wide receiver, Marvin Jones, Prashad Perryman, and Sammy Watkins are all great options. I think Sammy Watkins would probably be the best because I feel like he could take the pay cut to maybe try to run it back with the – or maybe even just try to run to the Super Bowl with the 49ers. Okay. Um, Jack, you said your take, right? Yes. All right. Now we're going to go to the best team in the NFC and probably in the league, the Arizona Cardinals with $14.8 million. Uh, Their top needs, well, we don't need it because we have a perfect team, but these are the needs that we, if we wanted them, of it's cornerback, guard, wide receiver, running back. Frontline football, best available. Patrick Sertan, J.C. Horn. Um, Wyatt Davis, Nick Easton, wide receiver, Larry Fitzgerald, Alshon Jeffrey, and finally with running back Najee Harris and Javon Williams. Guys to bring back Hassan Reddick. I don't understand what the frick is going on there. And Larry Fitzgerald. I'm going to start with my take. Cardinals have a great cap situation. I think that we should take J.C. Horn in the first round if Patrick Sertan is not there. And then for guard, um, if you don't Cardinals don't want to go with corner, which is the biggest need on the team, than uh, Wyatt Davis. Um, wide receiver, if Larry Fitzgerald retires and he's done, I think Alshon Jeffrey is a great option, um, and he'll be a good number three option to, behind Christian Kirk and DeAndre Hopkins. Um, and then finally running back, I don't want Najee. I want Javon Williams, but that's doesn't matter what I want. It's a pretty good uh, time to get it because we only have one running back and we run a two-back system. So Javon Williams would be a very good back to get because King and Drake is on a uh, – he's done with his contract uh, and he's in free agency this year. And then finally, guys, to bring back, Hassan Reddick, I don't understand what the heck we're doing. We have a fifth-year option on him, but uh, and he was drafted in the Watson draft, so they're in their fifth year. He's a first-round pick, so he should get his fifth-year option. I don't understand what the heck is going on. And Larry Fitzgerald, if he does not retire, I think we should give him a two-year deal so they can play until he's 40. And then, well, or a one-year deal, so just in case. I think one year is better, and then give him another one-year deal so then there's no dead cap. All right, Jack. All right. I think the Cardinals are in a pretty good situation moving forward. I think they should offer on Hassan Reddick to get him back they can't then still got JJ and Chandler Jones so it's not the end of the world but I try to get him back Fitz is a guy that I'd also want back that's pretty simple he's Cardinals are getting closer and closer to playoffs and therefore Super Bowl so Fitz may want to go out maybe on a playoff run a deep one as for cornerbacks first I think JC Horn is going to be the pick for the Cardinals most likely at 17 this just makes sense he's most likely going to be there he's the Sertan and Farley are going to go earlier, so J.C. Horn makes a lot of sense at 17. If you didn't want to do that, you could do Wyatt Davis, but I think you could maybe get him in the second round. Nick Easton is another intriguing option if you want to go through the free agent route. For wide receiver, Fitz is obviously your priority to get back in the building, but Ashawn Jeffrey can most likely play a very similar veteran role to what Fitz did. And last but not least, running back Najee, that would be interesting. I wouldn't spend a first on him. I'd focus on Horn for the first and Jav- Javon Williams. He's a he's also a good option if you wanted to go for one of the mid-rounds. Kenny Gainwell and Chubba Hubbard could also be good. But I don't know if they're going to re-sign Kenyon Drake because he is 
27 now, and most teams don't like to pay running backs when they can be addressed in the draft. What are your thoughts, Josh? I think that um, Arizona can probably be in the best situation that they can be right now. So you have $14.8 million. Don't try to spend it all in free agency. So first, probably get J.C. Horn because Patrick Sertan will be off the board when you guys are choosing because somebody is going to take him within the – five picks banned from the Cowboys to you. And next, probably address it with probably address your guard situation with Nick Easton. And then Larry Fitzgerald, it depends on how much money he's going to be wanting because you just got to remember, yes, he is your veteran leadership. Yes, he is your talent, but it also has to go down to how much money is he planning on trying to not get paid to play for the Cardinals? That's the big question. And if you can't get him back, maybe get a younger option like Alshon Jeffrey, who could do something like Larry Fitzgerald, maybe not at the same level, but still about the same production. And then finally, running back, get Javante Williamson or Chubba Hubba. Those are two great options. And finally, with your person to resign, Maybe Hassan Reddick, you could address that in the draft because you already have Chandler Jones and JJ, so don't lose sleep over that. And the Cardinals are really in a good situation to maybe make a playoff run next year. It just all depends on now coaching is their situation. All right. Well, this is the end of uh, off-season previews. I'd like to thank Jack for promoting this idea to do this, uh, and it was really fun. Um, yeah, it was really fun. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more of our content, and if you even like this video, what should they do, Josh? If you like what you saw here, I will not forget to read what we put at the end. We want to say thank you for watching this amazing thing. We've been doing this since February, I want to say. Uh, say February. But yeah, this has just been a great thing. We've just been doing this every single week, getting to see what team needs, and we will see you after Super Bowl 56 in Los Angeles, California. That's in 2022. This is, this is going to be a great year. So, if you like what you saw here, don't forget to hit that like button, punch that subscribe button, then turn on that notification bell, because you can turn on the notification bell, and hit that subscribe button. You're a part of the front line football fan base. Front line football fan base is the most up-to-date on their news, rumors, updates, and highlights across the NFL season and offseason, because they watch front line football. And if you're having a really hard time keeping up with all this free agency stuff, don't worry. We got your back here. We will talk about who are the biggest steals, who are the biggest hits, who are the biggest misses, who are the biggest everything we will talk about every single one that we know of by the time that we are filming which is about 7 30 to 8 o'clock central time and on tuesday so we thank you for watching and i have been josh from frontline football and jack hit the plugs as always don't forget to follow us on instagram and twitter at frontline fb you're too lazy good news there in the description Offseason, that looks really fun. It was intriguing to get to see what each team did and f get ready for the free agent madness that's about to begin as Frontline Football Free Agency Update is going to begin instead of the Outlooks. Back to once a week, but don't worry, draft content's about to pick up, so you won't be without videos for very long. Price a week's coming back sooner than later. As always, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you guys back here for next week's free agency update. See ya.